What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about two trades that I made today on the 26th of March in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally looking to trade for the rest of this week and heading on into the beginning of April in 2019. We're also going to quickly take a look at what happened with Apple and Qualcomm. I have an article here on the Safari tab. We're going to quickly talk about that in this video as well. But before we do talk about all of these different things, for everybody out there that enjoys these videos, you find value in these videos, and let's say you find value in this video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button, guys. It really does support the channel and supports me in general. And if you're new to the channel and you want to join our two free communities linked down below, the Discord and the Facebook, feel free to do so. I guarantee you guys you'll find a ton, a ton of valuable information in those communities. And without further ado, guys, let's talk about what the markets are looking like right now with about seven minutes left to the close of uh, the market here on the 26th of March. So let's just hop over here to the S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies. And it's looking like unless something crazy happens here in the next seven minutes, we're going to end up closing the day green, roughly up around 0.5%, up around give or take $15 at the close here and we're going to come back towards the end of the video and see exactly where we did close but as of now that is what the SPX is looking like. The Dow Jones is up nearly 100 points right now up about 0.4%. And the NASDAQ composite, guys, not too great of a day. It's up about $6 right now, up about 0.08%. So let's just hop back over here to the S&P 500. And for those of you guys that have been following the videos for a while now, you've been following them, especially over these past couple of days, we've been talking about the critical support the S&P 500 was at yesterday, right? And that was on the 50 simple moving average, as well as the 2790 to 2800 level of support here that we can see on this 180 day four hour chart and we were talking about this in yesterday's video as well as Friday and Sunday's video and we were talking about how you know if we were to break below these levels you know the S&P can end up selling off maybe down to 2736 which is the next uh, support level right but let's say we popped above these levels, the continuation of the uptrend would probably happen, right? And that is what we ended up seeing today, guys. And we can see that towards the end of the market here is that we're continuing this push off of the bounce of the 50 simple moving average and that support that we were just talking about, right? And let's just take a look you know, of the movement of the SPX here a little bit closer. We can see actually that we gapped up heavily in the morning. We were up about 1% in the SPX and we were kind of hovering in this range between 2820 and 2830 really for the first two to two and a half hours of the market open. We can see three separate tops here, you know, roughly at that level of the 2825 to 2830. Very strong level of resistance this morning. And then we actually saw a big sell-off, not too big of a sell-off, but about a 20 to 25 point sell-off in the S&P 500, um, you know, from this level at about 11.39 a.m. Eastern Standard, all the way down to about 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard. And now we can see we found a bottom, we're reversing to the upside, and we're breaking out of the 180 simple moving average resistance. That's been a resistance and the 50 simple moving average resistance. Both of these being resistances here over the past couple of hours, um, you know, in the S&P 500, and we're pushing up here looking to retest that resistance at about 2820. So let's just hop over here to the 20 day. Actually, let's go to the five day, five minute chart very quickly to see something interesting, right? So we talked about this in yesterday's video, how 
we can go either two ways, right? If we were on this, um, you know, we saw this trend line here yesterday, and I was telling you guys how if we were to gap out of this this morning, we were going to most likely see a green day, which is what ended up happening. And if we were to continue the downtrend, if we were to get rejected and pushed down, obviously more red what was probably going to come in that situation. And we saw the break above here, and now... We're actually maintaining the 180 simple moving average as a support here on the five day, five minute chart, which is actually super, super important in my eyes for the continuation of this uptrend heading into tomorrow's trading session. So for tomorrow, keep an eye on these levels here of about 28.20 and this 180 simple moving average support on the five day five minute and you may be asking yourself what is this 28.20 level here represent and if we go back to the 180 which is why I always preach to you guys it's super important to look at multiple different time frames we can actually see that 2820 level, if we just zoom in a bit, was actually a resistance from back in the middle of October, back in the beginning of November, and really back towards, you know, the middle towards the end of February in 2019. And that is the level roughly where we are right now. So if we go back to that five minute, uh, five day, five minute chart, we're going to need to break out of that level tomorrow and ultimately out of the 2825 level on the SPX for us to be, you know, continuing this uptrend pattern. So something like this needs to happen. Let's say we end up gapping up again tomorrow. We open up here and we slowly start to do something like this. That's going to be a good continuation you know, of the uptrend here in the SPX. But let's say on the flip side, right, the second scenario, if we're going to be selling off tomorrow, let's say we end up getting rejected here tomorrow. We do something like this, right? And then we go to test that double bottom level that we were talking about yesterday, roughly at about 2785 to 2790. You know, this could issue more selling in the overall stock market, right? So that is what I'm looking at in the SPX and the different scenarios that can potentially play out tomorrow. As of right now, everything is pointing green. And especially if we break out of this level, you know, of resistance tomorrow, I do see a lot of green, uh, you know, potential for tomorrow as well. And just take a look at how quick this is running up right now, guys. We're seeing a nice little pop up here, and it's looking like we're about to test that 2820 level right here at the close. So this is a pretty good sign, you know, in terms of the S&P 500. If we're hopping over here to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, same exact thing, right? We're seeing that nice pop. We saw the big sell-off, you know, from about 1130 Eastern Standard down to about 245 Eastern Standard. You know, the 50 and the 180 SMAs were acting as resistances. We got kind of a double bottom here, more like a higher low from the previous, a little, uh, you know, uptrend reversal towards the end of the market. And at the close, we can see we just popped up very nicely here. So let's just look at the longer term charts here um, in terms of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Just like we were talking about yesterday, guys. Well, for those of you guys that didn't even watch yesterday's video, you're a new subscriber, or you just uh, you know weren't paying attention or something. We were talking about this level of support on the Dow Jones, roughly at about $25,500. This was a previous resistance from the beginning of February. We obviously broke out of that resistance, making it a new support. Support. We retested the support back in the towards the uh, beginning of March here, about two three weeks ago, and now we popped up. And now we're retesting it. We retested it rather today, and the fact that we bounced off of it is a very good sign that we're continuing to push up. We're trading now in this little horizontal pattern from about twenty five thousand five hundred up to about. 25,800 and the next resistance in terms of the Dow we're going to be testing is going to be at around 25,800 roughly about 150 points above from where we are right now and let's say tomorrow we have a strong green day right very possible right anything is possible in the stock market especially in the, in the current market we're currently in right let's say we break out of this level 
The next level we're going to be looking to test is going to be at around $26,000 flat, which was actually where we topped off back about 10 days ago here in the Dow Jones. And if we break that level, you know, we're going to be testing $26,200. And then from there, guys, we're going to break out of that, which is actually will potentially break out of that if we do test the $26,000 level. And if we break out of the $26,200 level, that's going to be what we need to see in order for, you know, the Dow Jones and Industrial average to eventually test this all-time high, which is close to $27,000. So let's just take a look quickly here at this uh, five-day, five-minute chart, very similar to the SPX, right? We talked about how on Friday and on Monday, we saw very, very strong resistance here, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, the Dow Jones, right? We saw the resistance here at the top at 25,700, the next top at about 25,500, and then the close, we close at about 25,500 flat. This previous one was more like 25,600, actually. And then I was telling you guys how, we were going to either pop out or get rejected and then continue to push down. We obviously popped out and now we're holding the 180 simple moving average as a support just like the SPX. So this is a good sign that the Dow wants to continue this push into tomorrow and then retest the 25,800 level that I was talking about just a minute ago. So that is what I'm looking at, you know, in terms of the Dow Jones, you know, everything is looking Pretty solid for another green day tomorrow, you know, if those technical uh, indicators, you know, stay in place into the open tomorrow. And of course, we're looking at the futures in the morning, what the large caps are doing, stuff like that, right? So that's what the Dow Jones is looking like right now. The NASDAQ here had that nice little pump towards the close. We can see, you know, when I started the video, we were up about 0.05%. Ended up closing roughly up about 0.3%. Very, very solid, um, you know, closing move there in terms of the NASDAQ. So what were we talking about in yesterday's video, guys? We were talking about how the NASDAQ was trading between roughly 7300 60 and that the support at 7360 ish and the resistance at about $7,415. And since it didn't have too crazy of a green day or too crazy of a red day today, we're still in between those two levels. So what am I going to be waiting for tomorrow, guys, for the continuation of the uptrend? I want to ultimately see a hold on this 50 SMA. If we did break that, you know, that could issue more selling. And eventually, you know, I want to see a break out of the $7,400 level and a, and a retest at the $7,500 level where we ended up getting back roughly a week ago from now. So it's very simple, guys. You know, this, it's looking like it wants to continue to push up since A, it is holding the 50 SMA and B, it is holding this level of support here really over the past couple of days. So if we're hopping back to the five day, five minute, we can point out something interesting here um, you know, in terms of the NASDAQ over the two past two days of trading. What do you notice here? We're noticing a nice little uptrend pattern, right? Over this, you know, one day or the, roughly the five day, five minute, we're seeing a low at about 72.90, a higher low here, higher low here. And then this low here really sig signifies the continuation of the uptrend because, it, because it's a higher low from the previous. And we saw that big push towards the end of the market here today where we ended up breaking out of the 180 SMA resistance and the 50 SMA resistance as well. So this is all looking pretty, pretty dandy here in terms of the NASDAQ. And we can see here, actually, guys, we ended up opening up pretty, pretty heavy today, actually. 74.50 sold off all the way to 73.50. So that's nearly a 100% or not 100%. If it was 100%, that would be bad. 100 point drop in the NASDAQ. And then we recovered back up above that support. So now just keep an eye. Are we going to fill back up here? That is what I'm going to be watching for tomorrow in terms of the NASDAQ. So let's quickly talk about what I ended up trading today, guys. It wasn't too crazy of a trading day for me. I'm not going to lie. I barely took any trades in the middle of the day. I took a trade here about 15 minutes ago, right before I ended up recording this video. And also in the morning, 
in Tesla stock. And I actually talked about Tesla stock this morning. For those of you guys that watch my morning video, I upload morning videos every, not every day, but I try to do it every single day. Uh, you know, so stay tuned for those. But in this morning's video, <coughs> I was talking about Tesla stock. So we got news this morning that are, are about not, not this morning, I think it was actually yesterday, about 15, 14 hours before this morning's video, so at this point, it's probably closer to 24 hours ago, that the, uh, the, uh, the SEC and the lawsuit, the shareholder lawsuit against Tesla has been dismissed, right? So I talked about in this morning's video how this could be a catalyst for Tesla this morning. And what happened this morning, guys? Tesla ran from 264 all the way up to $270 off of that catalyst, in my opinion, that the lawsuit got dismissed. So I pretty much got in on this big green pump, this big uh, green candlestick here, and I held it for a couple of, uh, not a couple of hours, I was about to say a couple of hours, more, more like 30 minutes here in Tesla stock. It wasn't the biggest trade ever, but it was profit, guys, and again, profit is profit. So I ended up getting into Tesla roughly at about $265.39. And I held it for about 30 minutes, got my roughly about 1.1, 1.2% profit on the trade. Nothing too crazy. And when I'm taking day trades, guys, I'm taking about 1% to 2% on my trades, right? I'm not trying to get the home run trade all the time, the 5 10%. I'm not trading penny stocks. I never really trade penny stocks, to be completely honest with you guys. I'm not trading and chasing these 50 100% gains. I'm more into trading larger cap stocks on catalysts, positive catalysts, like we saw in Tesla stock today. And I'm all about taking that one two, three percent. Sometimes I do get five, six percent if I'm trading a leveraged GTF, you know, like UGAS, DGAS, DRIP, GUSH, if I'm trading TVIX, sometimes I do get more than one, two percent. But today, it wasn't the craziest day of profit. Got about one to 1.2 percent on Tesla. And that's pretty much it, guys. You know, the, the catalyst on the dismissal of uh, the lawsuit, pretty good in my opinion, because SEC and Elon Musk those are two things that don't like going together, right? Because Elon Musk hates the SEC, the SEC hates Elon Musk, and now that this is dismissed, I'm um, that's pretty positive in my eyes for Tesla stock. So the other position that I just took here a couple of minutes ago, not probably about 30 minutes ago at this point, was in NVIDIA, guys, ticker symbol NV. D A and this is one that actually pumped up pretty heavily from yesterday and I was kind of kicking myself because if you guys recall in yesterday's video I was saying how I was almost tempted to take an overnight swing in Nvidia and if I did do that I would have gained about eight dollars per share literally because I I would have sold at the morning because at this point you know we were extremely overbought I would have just took my profits knowing myself and knowing how I trade I would have been up about four point four percent. I obviously would have took my profits there, but the fact that we sold off all the way from 181 back down to 174, and then we had this little reversal pattern out of the 50 simple moving average uh, resistance and out of the 180 simple moving average resistance towards the close of the market, and we see the higher low here from the previous, you know, instituting a nice little uptrend pattern towards the close. You know, I took a position. In Nvidia stock, I recall. I can't forget. I can't remember what exact price it was. I think it was roughly about 10 minutes before the market closed. It was roughly about 176.25, 176.50, something like that. Ended up buying about six shares of this company. And I'll put a screenshot right here for you guys so you can see because I forget off the top of my head what exactly um you know I did buy in terms of shares, but or, or the price rather. And I do plan on holding this one up to the previous resistance at about $185. And I'm in with a small amount, guys. You see on the screen, I, I got like five or six shares, whatever. It's like $1,000, This is about 20% of my goal position, 15 to 20%. And you may be asking yourself, you know, why are you going in very light? On Nvidia because when I take swing trades guys for the most part I don't jump in with my goal position 
right away, right? So this NVIDIA trade, I would like to get this up to, let's say, a $7,500, maybe a $10,000 position, right? So if I'm in right now with roughly $1,500, whatever it is, you know, and it goes down, you know, I'm not going to lose as much money if I do cut my losses as I would have if I jumped in $10,000, K, $10, right away, right? So I'm hopping in right now with about 10, 15% of my position. And I plan on adding more as the uptrend continues, right? And another thing I'm seeing here that I really do like is the fact that we bounced on this 50 SMA support heading into today. So let's say we end up pushing higher tomorrow into 180. I might add some more money into NVIDIA there. Maybe buy another 10 shares, maybe 15 shares go a little bit heavier up here. So let's see tomorrow what ends up happening but the goal here if we do end up breaking the 50 SMA I'm probably going to end up cutting losses there in terms of NVIDIA ticker symbol NVDA so that's the quick little trading update today guys you know nothing crazy honestly it was a pretty slow day for me but the markets you know they've been kind of funky over these past couple of days they're swinging up they're swinging down they're not really picking a direction and you know it's just difficult sometimes to to pinpoint swing trades when this does happen but I do feel comfortable you know with this Nvidia trade you know we're we're hanging above the 175 ish support you know the 173 support which was a previous resistance I do like I do plan on selling at about 185 and if we break that you know $200 will be the next target there so what ended up happening today with Apple and Qualcomm guys this was actually Pretty, pretty big news that actually sent Apple stock tumbling here from the high of the day at about 192 down to about wherever we ended up closing. I think it was down about like one. We went down all the way to 184, guys. So take a look at that big dump in Apple shares down nearly 4% from the high of the day. And let's just hop into my Safari very quickly and we'll go over what's going on here. So Apple infringes Qualcomm patent. Judge recommends ban on some iPhones. So Apple, for those of you guys that don't know, Apple and Qualcomm, they've been at war here for some time, right? So Apple Inc. infringes a Qualcomm Inc. patent and some imported iPhones should be blocked from the U.S. as a result. A U.S. trade judge said in one of two cases before the U.S. International Trade Commission. So Qualcomm actually jumped 1.6% as of 1.58 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time here. And, you know, the whole thing about this, guys, is that they're planning on banning some imports from China for certain iPhones, right? So in this case, Qualcomm contends Apple iPhones with Intel Corp chips infringe two patents related to ways to improve the speed and quality of data downloads and one for a power saving feature. It's seeking an order that would ban imports of those iPhones. The judge finding an infri uh, finding of infringement related to the power saving feature. So this is pretty much why Apple stock ended up tumbling very quickly and this kind of segments into what I'm looking to trade for tomorrow and honestly for the rest of this week heading into April in 2019 so we can see Qualcomm here popped right like you know Apple dropped Qualcomm popped we can see we saw it in the article from 56 up to about 58.30 Pretty sizable move there in terms of Qualcomm. And in general, guys, Qualcomm's pattern right now is looking pretty beautiful, right? We're seeing the bottom at about $49, which was a support from about a couple of years ago, I think. We did cover this stock in one of my videos recently. Yeah, it was from a couple of years ago. We can see a solid support at about $49.10. Hopping back over here to the 184 hour, we can see the bullish reversal here, the bullish crossover of the 50 SMA above the 180 SMA here on the 184 hour chart. And this is something that I like to see whenever I'm taking a swing position 
excuse me, in any particular stock, right? I wouldn't want to take a swing position when Qualcomm is at this point, right? Because at this point, we're still downtrending. We're seeing a bearish cross, which is the 50 SMA below the 180 SMA. So why would anyone want to trade that on a swing basis, right? If anything, you'd want to play put options there or short the stock, right? But we saw the reversal to the upside, the bullish crossover, the 50 SMA above the 180 SMA, the candlesticks are holding the 50 SMA as a support. We dipped here, ended up bouncing at 56.25 with this good news for Qualcomm. The stock popped. So let's say tomorrow we end up breaking this resistance at $58. I think Qualcomm can end up doing pretty well from there. And notice how we're at a point of resistance in Qualcomm stock that stems back to really the beginning of December of 2018. So take a look at this, guys. If we end up breaking this resistance, end up holding it as a new support, we could potentially run up to the 60, uh, you know, the uh, early 60s here, let's say $61 in terms of Qualcomm stock, which does offer it a nice 4 or 5% margin of profit. So just keep an eye on Qualcomm. This is something that I'm watching very, very closely heading on to the rest of this week. So uh, QCOM, I almost said CQM, uh, QCOM, that's one that I'm watching here. Of course, NVIDIA is another one I'm watching. I pretty much did my analysis on NVIDIA, very similar to Qualcomm, right? We're seeing the bullish crossover here. We're seeing higher lows, higher highs, all that jazz for the continuation of the uptrend. We broke out of the 173 resistance, held it as a new support, opened up that margin. I'm planning on trading it up to 185. We already talked about that. Don't want to, um, you know, uh, really repeat myself at this point. Another one that actually somebody talked about um, in the chat today was Spotify. Or no, it was not Spotify. What was it? I, oh, what was it now? Oh, Shopify. Spotify, Shopify. They sound the same, actually, now that I think about it. I actually never thought about that. Shopify, Spotify. They actually sound exactly the same. But Shopify here, this was brought to my attention, and I told him that you know, Shopify is already at all-time highs right here. There is some potential due to it holding the 50 SMA, slowly starting to curl back up. There is maybe some margin for a little trade here. If we do end up testing, you know, 210 again, maybe from 204 where we ended up closing to 210, you know, you can grab about 2-3% margin there. But if anything, you know, Shopify could be a potential short play here, let's say we end up double topping at this point, we end up breaking the 50 simple moving average and we start to do something like this, you know, this stock has nearly doubled in price over the past couple of months. This is an insane run in Shopify and everything that goes up, not everything, but stocks that shoot up crazy like this, you know, for the most part, they do see a correction, guys. So let's say we correct it down to the 170s. This can be a fantastic put option or a short play if we do end up double topping here. But for all we know, we could continue to run up, guys. You know, we could continue to run up, push up, maybe make a new all-time high. But in my opinion, you know, Shopify right now is in the state of euphoria, right? You've heard this before when the stock market it's in a state of euphoria. Oh my God, everything's so great. We're green after green after green. You know, that usually is the best time to sell your stocks, right? So if people start selling off, we break the 50 SMA, we start to push down. You know, this could be a short play here and I'm watching it for that particular play. So Shopify, that is what I'm talking about and watching in terms of uh, this stock here. Tesla, might as well talk about Tesla again here, guys. With this catalyst, who knows? We might be able to push up even more tomorrow. And what I'm watching for here, guys, is for the break of the 50 simple moving average resistance here. If we were to break that level and we started to test, you know, maybe 280 again, this could be a runner back up to maybe 290, maybe 295, which would put us at that 180 simple moving average, um, you know, resistance here. Because it seems like we are holding the 250 support from back over a couple of months ago. So this is a good sign that we could potentially reverse here. But until we break this 50 SMA and 280, you know, we're still on that downtrend with the 50 SMA being a resistance. So keep an eye tomorrow on Tesla stock. Very, very um, 
interesting levels right now in terms of the stock. For all we know, we could potentially pop, but just keep an eye on this level. If we get rejected here, you know, I'm not going to be really looking to trade um, Tesla stock. So I actually got some requests for NEO. And NEO right now, although it is on a downtrending pattern, very clear downtrend here, no signs of reversal whatsoever. This is a speculative stock that, you know, a lot of people are putting some speculative money in right now, right? Some people are buying some shares here, hoping that this Chinese car manufacturing, uh, electric car company, does well over the next couple of months so they could potentially double their money, right? This is something that is kind of out of my realm, right? I don't really trade quote unquote penny stocks because this is not really a penny stock, but I consider anything from one to five dollars a penny stock kind of out of my realm here. But you know, I might consider possibly, you know, putting maybe $500 into NEO stock for fun. Who knows, right? I might just do that, although I never do that, and I don't advise you to do that. Don't do that. If, if you're watching, do not do that unless you understand the risk, right? Because this company, <coughs> you know, although it doesn't have, or showing rather, a sign of a reversal to the upside, there is potential for this stock to double. There is. There's 100% potential for this to double because of the volatility of the company, right? Just take a look at this. From $7 all the way up to $10, you would have made a killing of a return there if you put in a little bit of money, you know, right here, right? And the fact that it's gotten battered down so hard, I think it's worth watching as a speculative play here, right? Speculative, very, very speculative. This could definitely go bankrupt. Who knows? But if you're willing to put a little bit of money that you're willing to 100% lose, I say go for it, right? I'm willing to lose 100% of $500. And let's say I put in $500, you know, I forget about it. And then we look at NEO stock in a couple of weeks. And let's say it's back up to $8, $10. I made double my money. I made a little $500 profit there, right? So this is something that I'm going to be watching. But again, this is out of my realm, right? I don't really trade stocks like this, especially penny stocks and especially stocks that are downtrending like this. But for fun, I might put some money in. I will let you guys know. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter. Join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. 100% free, linked down below. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace out.